everyone. Today we're going to be painting this nice birch tree painting and we're going to be using uh, primarily a sponge and a gift card to do this. Um, so this painting uses some less conventional painting techniques which is why I like to do an example of it. And as you can see here you can use any kind of combination of colors for your background. Um, I like to use two primary colors and kind of blend them together that way you don't get a muddy brown. So in today's painting, I'm going to use greens and blues, and that's going to give me kind of a daytime looking, um, maybe summer, springish kind of painting, um, as opposed to a sunset or something like that. So I'm going to start with my lightest color, which is I'm just going to use this blue here as kind of my background tint, and I'm going to do a really quick layer of it on the painting. So I'm going to use a nice wide brush just to get a good kind of first coat down. After this, we're going to be using the sponge to build up our texture. Now this base layer does not need to be perfect by any means. We just basically want to get blue everywhere on the canvas. So don't feel like you need to be perfect with this painting layer here. You can see I'm not really paying too much attention to even brush stroke or anything at this point. I'm just trying to get blue everywhere. We want this because it's going to, you know, we're going to be able to build on it. We don't want to build on a white canvas, especially with the sponge. You're going to get a lot of um, kind of textured holes and stuff with a sponge, right? That's the whole purpose of it is to get that texture. So if you have a nice blue or a nice solid color background, uh, it'll just make that be the, the layer that we see underneath everything rather than the canvas. There we go. So I have my blue down. Now, ideally, I do want this to dry a little bit. So I will just hit it with a blow dryer here really quickly. Right, so that gives us a nice dry layer to build on. And you can actually see there's so much transparency even in this first layer. I always do a couple of layers of paint when I'm doing a, a paint paintbrush style painting. But with this, because we're gonna be using our sponge, we're gonna get a lot of layers anyway. So now I'm gonna actually work in with my next lightest color, which is going to be this green here. Um, I'm just using paint from the dollar store today. None of these are too expensive, which is wonderful. This is a really good painting for uh, beginner painters or painters who just want to have some fun and try some different techniques. So I'm just going to kind of dab in a little bit of green here. Uh, you can see I've, I've blended the paint into the sponge. I don't have any kind of thick dabs of paint here. And that's going to give me the nice sponge texture. Now sponges come in different kind of textures, right? So I like the soft squishy ones like this the best. I feel like they give me the best kind of sponge texture. But some sponges look a little bit different than this. And those are just going to give you different textures. Now I do want to add just a little bit of blue back into this. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of blue on the other side of my sponge here. And just add a little bit back in. You can see I, I, I want to do kind of my sponge layers while my paint is wet. There we go. You can go back and forth with your colors. If you're doing it while your paint is wet, you're going to notice you get a little bit of the other color coming through on your sponge. And that just gives you a nice natural looking blend. So now I have a really good kind of blue green uh, balance there. Nice wet paint. You can see those transparency layers are um, almost gone. Now I'm using a dark green here. So I'm going to add a bit of dark green in. I'm doing it on the same, same part of my sponge as I had the light green. I don't mind a little bit of a mix here. There we go. Nice dark green. Oops. <laughs> don't do that. There we go. So I've kind of blended it in and now I'm going to tap it on. And I want some areas to be darker than others. So I'm not going to kind of do this evenly everywhere. I'm just going to pick and choose areas where I want it to be a little darker. I have a little piece there of something or other. I'm just going to pick it up. There we go. Try not to get patterns. You can see I'm getting a little bit of a pattern because of this particular bubble. So I'm just going to try to soften those up a bit here. Try to keep your, your paint on the center of your sponge. That way you won't get any lines. If you put it on the edge, you might get a little line repeating over and over again. All right, so that's looking pretty nice. Still have a little bit of the lightness coming through. Now I'm going to add dark blue. I'm going to go on this side here. You can add as many colors as you want, really. Um, you know, Just make sure you don't overpower the other colors too much. There we go. This one's a little bit too thick there, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm just tapping really light straight up and down. That gives you that nice texture. Now I don't want to go everywhere with this blue. The blue is almost like the sky peeking through the leaves in the background. So I'm just going to kind of add it bits and pieces of it here. 
There we go, a few nice dark blue areas. And then I'll just kind of tap in. And now this is feeling a little on the dark side. So I might go back in with just a hint of light green and see if I can't brighten up just a few spots. I'm just gonna put it right there and just see if I can't add just a tad of brightness in here. There we go, just a little bit. Just a bit, there we go. So you can see I'm really mapping out some nice dark areas, some nice bright areas, and that's just gonna feel more foresty. It's gonna feel more natural, like the light coming through the trees. You can kind of imagine that. All right, I'm gonna wash this. It's very important to wash your sponge right away. If you let the paint dry, your sponge will crack and break. So I'm gonna be right back. All right, my sponge is clean, at least clean-ish. Um, and now it's very important to blow dry your painting, so I'm just gonna quickly do that. So now we have our painting is dry. You have to make sure it's absolutely dry because we're gonna create a mask with painter's tape. Now, when we're doing our mask, we're going to put tape where we don't want our trees to be. So you want to mask off the areas of your artwork that you really, really like. For example, I don't particularly like this one space right here. It just feels a bit too overpowering in terms of green. And I love this space right here because of all of the different textures I have in there. So I'm gonna make sure I preserve this and I put a tree on top of this. I also got a little bit of, oh dear. Well, that's not good. So that paint was still wet, but guess what? I can just go ahead and put a tree right on top of that, but I should probably hit it with another blow dryer. So uh, I'm gonna cover up this little area here with a tree. Um, so that kind of stuff, all right? So I'm just gonna hit this with a blow dryer one more time. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. I think I just had a clump of paint there that didn't dry. Everything else seems to be fine. So I'm going to put tape where I want uh, my background to stay. Now the trees are also going to get a little bit smaller as they get closer to the top. So I'm gonna make the um, space in between the trees smaller here and wider here. So I'm gonna mask off this area. I love this area. Now I am going to do a nice thick kind of area here. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put one strip of tape right down where I love everything. So I'm gonna preserve all of this. All of this is gonna be preserved. There we go. Now to make your trees feel nice and um, kind of realistic in terms of texture, what I do is I actually rip my painter's tape. Painter's tape is so easy to rip. You just put pressure in the middle. You don't need nails. You can just kind of use the side of your finger and then you just pull and then you pull straight back and usually you're going to get a nice clean rip. So this rip is going to give you just a little bit of texture for the edge of your tree. Make sure it's the length that you want. I like to kind of there we go, I just uh, stuck the bottom to the table there so I wouldn't get it rolled up. Now it takes a little bit of practice to get the knack of that, but it's not too bad. So again, we want it smaller here, bigger at the top. That's going to give us our trees tapering um, smaller to the top, bigger to the bottom. So now I have a nice rough edge there and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. This is gonna be my widest area of background. So luckily I already have this uh, kind of ripped here. So I'm just gonna put the other side here smaller, bigger as we go up, just a little bit. There we go. So that's gonna be one area where we have no trees. Now I do like to make some trees big, some trees small. So I know I want a tree here and I know I need a tree here, especially here. I'm gonna put a little piece of tape right here so I know that this is going to be a tree. So I'm covering up the areas that I love and I'm, I'm uh, exposing the areas that I maybe don't like quite as much. I rip this and if you want smaller areas you just need to rip smaller pieces of tape there we go a little wider at the base I'm gonna make sure that that whole kind of space there we go this is gonna get painted over right because I have that little piece of wet paint up there and now I'm just gonna use the other side of this actually this is a nice wide one so maybe I'll try to do just a tiny space between the trees. So that means that both sides of this taper, taper is ripped. And that's, there we go, look at that. So I'm just gonna be able to put this down anywhere. So this is gonna be a tree, and then I'm gonna have a space here. I know this is gonna be a big tree. So I'm gonna put this right here, and that's gonna give me just a sliver of space here. There we go. So this is gonna be a very tiny tree right here. There we go, so I have a nice small tree there. I might even move this over just a little bit. 
Maybe we'll make our tree just a smidge bigger. There we go. You can see the tree would be right in there, right? So you can actually see the shape of this tree is a little wider and then it gets a little bit smaller as it goes up. Now I want to cover up this space right here. So I'm gonna have a big monster tree here. Um, so I'm gonna put the other side of this tree. So I'm kind of working out my composition a little bit here. So again, I'm ripping my tape. I do like having a nice variety of shapes here. Here we go. So I want it to overlap more on the top and then a little less on the bottom to give me a wider space between. There we go. I just tuck them in behind so they don't peel by accident. Here we go. So tree, no tree. And then I want this to be a tree. So I'm gonna do another kind of smaller one right here. This is too big, I think, for a tree. So I'm gonna use this piece that's already ripped. This is going to go like this. So this tree is going to be at a little bit of an angle. There we go. And then I'm going to have another little piece right there. Again, I'm just putting pressure and pulling. This is a nice, another nice centerpiece. Ah, I could, I could use it here. I'll put that piece that's kind of wrecked on the inside. And I'll go like that. I do want my tree to get a little bit more narrow as it gets to the top. I know what I'll do. I'll kind of go like that. Okay, so that's a nice little small space there. There we go. So this tree is a little narrower here than here. So I think I want to kind of cover up a little bit up here. So I'm just going to add a little half piece of tape. I have this one here. This just kind of fell off, but now we have a use for it. And I'm going to try to thicken up that area up there just a little bit. There we go. There we go. So that feels a bit better. So tree, 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 tree. I'm going to put another kind of medium sized tree here. And then I think I'll let this, uh, this be background here. So And that's a good sized tree. Yeah, we'll go like that. So there we have a nice edge to our tree and then I can just kind of use regular tape here to mask that off there. So I'll just go like that. There we go. So now I have everything masked off. And honestly, that's probably the hardest part of this painting is masking everything off. Okay, you wanna really press your paint down or your tape down to make sure that you don't have any little clumps that aren't um, sealing. So you just do a, do a final scan with your finger, just really lightly rub everything up and down. Don't go this way, you'll actually kind of peel the tape by accident. Just go straight up and down with your finger. Now it's time to add the white. Now I like to add my white with a sponge. The reason for that is because it gives me an additional layer of texture. So I'm gonna use the sponge and I'm gonna tap in. So it's not that we're visibly going to see the texture as much as we're going to feel the texture. Having that texture physically there is going to give us a slightly better um, surface to scrape into with our gift card because we want it to feel rough. We want it to have that look of being rough. So if we actually make the paint surface rough, it makes that next step just a little bit easier. So you will see a little bit of that, that background color coming through and that's okay. So your white will cover, but it's not gonna cover 100%. Um, titanium white tends to cover better than some other whites, but you are likely going to see just a little bit of your underpainting. And remember that's okay. All right, so I have this tapped in. Again, very important to do a quick blow dry. So, uh, or blow dry and also wash your sponge. So I'm gonna do those two things right now. I'm just gonna tap a little bit more in here. There we go. I'm gonna wash my sponge first, then I'm gonna blow dry and I will be right back. Okay, so now we have everything dry. Make sure it's nice and dry. Just give it a little touch. And uh, we have our tape down. So now it's time to work on our tree texture. And this is, I think, the most fun part. So we're gonna use black paint. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of black paint here in my palette. I like to use lids as palettes. Um, and part of the reason for that is the, I can dip my cards, my palette knives into them better than I can some palettes that have those little kind of uh, divots in them. So here's just a card, gift card, plastic card, any plastic card will do, any plastic surface really, even a palette knife will work fine, just get a large one. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of paint along the edge. 
So I've just dipped it a little bit. I might even take off just this little area here. You can tell I don't mind getting my hands dirty a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna start on, so here you see how much paint's on there. We're gonna start on the tape and we're gonna pull out. And this is, we're gonna push down nice and hard and it's gonna give us these kind of birch tree textures. Go until your card doesn't have any paint on it. So keep pushing, keep going. Oops, wait, that's not tape. There we go. Clean it off. Those little areas where the, the gift card is kind of getting cleaned off almost give you the best birch tree texture. So really try to try to get some nice texture in there, some nice grit. Um, that's gonna really look like a birch tree. So I'm gonna keep doing that, starting on the tape and pulling out. There's again, I just tap, tap, tap. Start here and pull out. You can see I'm kind of pulling and lifting. That way I don't get any really aggressive streaks that go right across and cut my tree in half. This is just such a small space in here. I'm trying to just get a little bit of, there we go. Some nice little ones. The smaller trees are a little harder to do. There we go. Really starting to feel like a birch tree. Now here's my nice big tree. So this one may be a little bit more challenging because uh, I'll probably want to start some right in the middle like that, but I don't like that hard line. So while that's wet, I'm going to kind of go the other way with it like that. Here we go. So just getting some nice textures in there. And that's looking pretty good. I don't want to go too deep. So again, just dip, 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 a little bit, little bit, little bit, and pull and pull. See, this one got a little hard there. Um, so you want to try to avoid anything too blocky. There we go. Again, just clean off that gift card. Really put some pressure on it, get it nice and mucky. That is going to make it feel more realistic than if you had like perfectly white, pristine background. So I'm kind of on my last layer here. Dip just a little bit up here. Just add a little there we go, fill in a few areas where you think you need them. Didn't actually get that much pull down here. There we go. Now you're gonna flip it the other way and go the other way. And that's going to make the tree feel more round. Dip, dip, dip. You can see it on the gift card there. Start on the tape, pull out. Start on the tape, pull out. And again, you don't wanna create little areas that kind of block the tree off. So when you're dipping, kind of keep in mind where your dips are and then try to um, feed into the empty negative space that you've created with your poles, if possible. If you get a couple that go straight across, it's still going to be quite nice, so don't, don't stress. Nice, easy painting here today. All right, clean gift card. Again, I'm just going to go dip, dip. The other thing I like about a gift card is you can bend it to get those kind of little dips, right? Nice and pliable. So you want to go all the way on, on every tree. You want to have some going both ways. Oops. So I crossed that one over. And again, that's going to be fine. You'll see it'll be fine. Even on my tree on the outside, I want to make sure some of mine is pulling inward. There we go. So it's starting to feel very birchy now. There we go. Just a couple small ones in the space. Already kind of feels like a nice little birch tree forest, just, just in how I've been uh, leaving the tape sections. I'm just trying to see maybe a little more here. Again, you can do some in the middle. You just want to kind of pull them both ways so you don't get any aggressive lines. There we go. And maybe I'll do just in this big tree. I'm going to do a little bit there and then go this way and pull it that way. There we go. Maybe even one down here. It's a little knot in the middle. There we go. All right, that is feeling pretty nice. You don't want to overdo it. Um, and then we need to wait for this to dry and we're going to be doing a wash next. Now the wash is optional. If you're doing this with kids, the wash can be a little bit challenging. If you're doing it with adults, then by all means, get your wash on. Uh, so I like to do my wash in these small little containers here. Anything with a good lip because a wash is mostly water. And to create your wash, you want water. It doesn't matter if it's dirty because we're using a black wash here. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water here. You can see the water there. And then you wanna add a little bit of paint to the water. And you don't want your brush to be, you want your brush to be soft. You want it to be flat like this. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of paint here. So here's the paint on my brush and I'm gonna stir it in. Don't stir over your painting like I'm doing. This is not, this is not smart. So I wanna create almost like a milky texture. I'm gonna add just a little bit more here. All right, and I'm gonna to start to stir over the side. Well, I just wanted to show you guys how to do a wash. 
Now you can do a little bit of practice just to see how it's going to turn out. So I'm just gonna, there we go. So you can see I have kind of a nice darkness there. All right, and if you don't like your wash, have a paper towel handy, you can dab it off. So if it gets too dark, just dab it really quickly before it dries and you can kind of pick it up just like you could with watercolor. All right, so I'm gonna pick the light side. I'm gonna make sure this is all dry first. I think it is. I'm actually going to do my wash on the other side just as a safety because this should be mostly dry. There we go. So pick a light source. I think my light's gonna come in this way, which means that this side of my trees is going to have a little bit of a shadow on it. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a wash right here. Now that is actually very dark. So I'm gonna water that down a bit. So I'm gonna add just water to my brush and I'm gonna thin that out a little bit here. So while your wash is wet, you can kind of add your water. You can tap on it to get to lift it a little bit. There we go. So using a nice clean brush, I'm just gonna try to transition that out. So it's a nice smooth gradient from dark to light. All right, so now I'm going to do just a little, let's see here, I'm gonna do this next big tree here. There, that's a little better, a little less aggressive here. So there I have a strip and then I'm gonna clean my brush off and then just kind of transition out of it there with a nice clean brush. Clean my brush off, there we go. There we go, make it nice and smooth from light to dark. Now this is a tree here this is a very tiny tree, so I'm just gonna pick up a small little bit. I don't wanna get overboard here. Just add it to the edge. I might not even clean this up too much. I will still do kind of a small little, here, let's get a nice clean brush and just kind of run it over the edge here to pick up a little bit to give it that nice kind of gradient. So shadow, highlight, tape, shadow, highlight, tape, shadow, highlight, tape. So I need shadow, highlight, shadow, highlight. So I have two more little washes to do here. Just putting a little bit on the corner of my brush. There we go. Add in that shadow. Right at the edge of the tape there. And I'm just gonna do both of these at the same time. Really quick here, clean, 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 clean. Kind of get my, soften that edge. There we go, nice soft edge. So I'm going to also do a bit of splattering. The best tool for splattering is a toothbrush, which I actually don't have in front of me. So I'm just gonna go grab it, one second. All right, so a toothbrush is really good for splattering because the bristles are nice and stiff. Stiffer bristles make for better splatters. Uh, and what you're going to do is we're gonna add paint and then we're gonna run our finger along it, angled it down, and it's going to splatter a nice thin splatter everywhere. So I'm just gonna go ahead again. Don't do this over top of your painting, this is silly. You don't want that. I'm just doing it so you can kind of see. Just like with the um, with the sponge, I'm gonna kind of get everything mushed in so I don't get any big dabs of paint. I'm just gonna do a zoom because you guys will probably not be able to see the splatters from above. So you can kind of see the little splatter effect that we get here. Just a nice soft splatter, helps to break up the texture. If you get some kind of streaks, that's okay. There we go, just a nice soft splatter everywhere. You could also do this with black if you feel like your, um, your tree is feeling just a little bit too white at this point. I would do it with black. I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see. There we go. How the splatter just kind of gives you that nice, nice bit of texture there. And you do want to make sure before we remove the tape that your painting is completely dry. So I recommend just giving it one more blow dry. All right, that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to stop and give my painting that final blow dry. Then we're gonna take off the tape and we'll be finished. Okay, so it's time to remove our tape. Blow drying also helps with the tape removal because it heats up the glue and uh, that just makes for easier tape removal here. So I'm gonna try to remove them in chunks. Pull slowly and straight back. If you notice your paint start to rip, sometimes the um, the paint will rip, or sorry, the tape will rip. You can just go the other way with it. If you notice the paint starting to peel, uh, go the other way with it as well. That sometimes happens if your paint is still a little bit wet when you put it down. All right, so there's one strip of tape. Now I do like to do one more step. I said we were done and you totally can be done at this point, but I do like to add outlines to my trees. Now this is a personal thing, and I just do that with a fine detail brush. So I will do that step with you guys as well, but I might kind of speed up through it a little bit. 
This is the most fun part, taking off the tape here. Yeah, it's all pretty fun. It's a fun painting. There we go. So we're removing our tape. We're seeing our background coming through now. Birch trees popping forward. And, you know, I just like the look of the outline. It kind of makes it feel a little bit less realistic in a way, but it, it has a nice style to it. Um, even when I draw, I really tend to lean into outlines. So I'm going to use a small detail brush here and I'm going to just add in some outlines. So any small brush will do. This is just a zero. This is a zero round. Any small brush will work though. I actually might go to a smaller, like a triple zero here. And I already have black paint. So I'm just going to use this black paint that's in my palette. And I'm just slowly going to add my outlines. I'm going to start one side, work my way over so I don't smudge anything. You just follow your own artwork. And again, this is totally an optional step. You do not need to add outlines, but I like them. I think they look nice. And sometimes I'll just add outlines here and there, like maybe around the areas that are more black. Sometimes I'll add them everywhere like I am here. There we go. It's just a nice look. Again, I'll probably just speed the camera up here because it's just the same step over and over again. Um, and you might not even be doing this step, so I'll just speed through it here. All right, we're on our last little line here. Didn't take too long. Um, now, if you want to share your artwork with me, you can always tag me in it on Instagram. You can find me at creations underscore by underscore Kendra, or you can also find me on Facebook at creations by Kendra or art teacher Kendra Malcolm. Uh, I do teach art online, so if you're interested in the lessons, also reach out. And if you wanna buy any of my paintings, again, I do sell my artwork, so you can reach out as well for that. All right, look at that. Nice finished artwork. You can see those lines cleaned everything up a little bit, which is why I like them. It also gives it kind of a nice style. I hope you guys enjoyed painting with me today and uh, I hope you guys uh, watch another video soon. Oh yeah, please subscribe, like if you like this video. Um, I try to post at least once a month, but sometimes even more than that. All right guys, thanks so much.